Hey, this is Derek Jordan. Welcome to the World Fusion Show, where we bring you the leading innovators in world fusion music. Today, my guest is Max E.T., who is a hammer dulcimer player, but not your average hammer dulcimer player, I have to say. He's been very influenced by Senegalese and Indian music. Welcome, Max E.T., to the World Fusion Show. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much. Honored to be here. It is such, so great to have you. And I was, I'm really knocked out by your music and you've really got an unusual approach to the hammer dulcimer. And of course, that's your own natural ability and instinct, but also some of these really interesting influences that you've had. Now, I'd like to get into a little bit of your background. You were attracted to the instrument from a very early age. Tell us about that. Sure. Um, I only found out this uh, quite a bit later, uh, but when I was about two years old, uh, I saw the instrument at a museum uh, exhibit opening, and I uh, I just was so entranced by it that as a little two-year-old, I walked over there and just sat underneath the instrument and just stared up at the soundboard, just like, what is this? And I sat there for the entire time. And as a two-year-old, like that doesn't happen with two-year-olds, you know? The oh, no. two-year-olds are like crazy and running around all over the place. Uh, but I just was completely mesmerized by this, uh, by this instrument and just was floored by it. Um, literally floored by it. I just sat on the floor and that was that. Yeah. Uh, only years later did my parents like remember that story. Um, but I eventually saw it again when I was about, let's say six or seven, uh, at a folk festival outside of Chicago, which is where I grew up. And, uh, it was again something just i was immediately drawn to it like this is a super cool instrument it's drums it's melody it's harmony it's percussion it's something that was like so interesting to me and it just made me uh uh ask my parents hey let me do this it took me a little while to convince them and uh then here we are 30 years later yeah right <laughs> yeah so great now you've also um studied quite a bit um you spent a lot of time in senegal um, correct um, working with, uh, I think it was a chora player, right? That, in Senegal. Yeah, this is Soko family. Yeah, very famous uh, griot, right? Uh, chora player. So, um, can you tell us a little bit about that experience and living with them? Sure. Um, I first went out there in, uh, I guess, when I was nineteen, um, and been back, uh, you know, uh, many times after that. Um, it really completely changed the way I was playing. Up to that point, I was doing the American folk and Celtic and Irish tradition of music, which is how it's used mostly in this country, which is a lot of like single line uh, uh, melody. Um, but uh, once I got to Senegal, uh, I, got, I was actually originally going there for percussion to like, oh, maybe I can get some sort of left hand, right hand independence. Uh, I eventually got that, but not through djembe or through sabar, um, but it was through the kora which is the gourd with the pole that comes out, you know, and they pluck it like this. And they'll be dividing the music, uh, you know, with bass lines and harmony and melody and improvisation to these kind of four different sub brains. Uh, and I thought that that's how I should approach the instrument, the dulcimer. Similarly, play, make my right hand do one thing, make my left hand do another. And it really completely changed uh, the sound, my sound at that point. Um, after the single line, coming from the single line thing, it became way more orchestral. So, yes. hey, I can do melody, I can do harmony, I can make it sound bigger than just one instrument playing. Uh, and it really, it changed everything for me. Well, you certainly do that. Your, your sound is quite large. <laughs> yeah. Say, quite, yeah. Quite big. And I, I'd like to go to our first video, which is uh, you playing solo in a desert setting. Tell us quickly about that. Sure. That's the first um, single video for my upcoming uh, album, which is uh, releasing on April 8th uh, with Six Degrees record. It's my first time ever doing a solo record. I've done dozens of records, but it's my first time doing a solo hammer dulcimer. It was a completely and totally improvised record. I just pressed record every day for a couple hours a day for about, let's say, 10, 12 days, and then chose my favorite contiguous hour. Uh, so repeating those songs again and again is a little tricky because I have no idea exactly what I was doing. Uh, but then I really found this really favorite hour, and one of those pieces that came out of that improvisation was this piece called In It uh, that I've titled In It. Uh, and then I tried to emulate that at least uh, as best I could, or at least the energy of that piece um, when I was in Joshua Tree well, in, uh, in California. It's beautiful. Let's go to the video right now.
All right, we are back from the desert with Max CT. And Max, I wanted to ask you about um, other, the other very important uh, teacher you had was in India. Um, Absolutely. A Santor player. Tell us about that experience there. Sure. Um, I first got exposed to his music, I guess, in 2008. This is Pandit Shiv Kumar Sharmaji. He's the, uh, the preeminent scholar and uh, a pioneer of the Santur. Um, before uh, him, it was mostly considered a, a Kashmiri folk instrument, and he kind of brought it into a much larger uh, classical context. Uh, I got a grant from the American Institute of Indian Studies, uh, and they brought me out there to study with him. Uh, for supposed to be only nine months, but I stretched the stretched the money to, to about two years so um, and stayed almost two years straight with him, uh, studying uh, raga and tala and how to incorporate the philosophical aspects that goes into that music into my own music. I like to say that if if Senegal taught me uh, what and uh, and how to play uh, in this new context and this new sound, uh, India taught me why, uh, and because there's a lot more intention, a lot more. Uh, philosophy that goes behind it, or at least I, I, I took a lot of that uh, in uh, from the Indian classical uh, repertoire and put that into my uh, into my own playing. Yeah, no, so interesting, and of course so different than Senegalese music and the approach. Very different, completely different culture, and you had to absorb that so much, of course, you know, in your absolutely. Um, so now we're going to go to our next video. This is with your trio, current trio, House of Waters, a piece called 17. Uh, really interesting stuff. Tell us about it. Sure. Um, that uh, actually was written after I came back from India. Um, I got really exposed to a lot of odd meter music and got way more comfortable with that. Um, so there was the technical aspects, of course, of what I learned in India. But like we're saying, the philosophical aspect is something that stuck with me a lot larger. Uh, but studying um, that music and then bringing it into my band here in uh, in the U.S. Uh, with Moto Fukushima, the bass player, he and I have been playing now for 15 years together, uh, and we just wrote this song, and that's what it, that's what we <laughs> that's what we called it because it's in 17.
All right, we are back with Max CT. Now, um, we, uh, you are about to release a new CD uh, coming up April 8th. So tell us about that, that CD. Sure. Uh, this uh, album is called Daybreak. That's my first solo CD. Uh, there's no layers, uh, no overdubs. I just recorded uh, for about you know two to three hours a day for our, let's say ten to twelve days, and uh, it really it was trying to be a uh, uh, almost like a sense of service uh, to people that were suffering during this time. Uh, you know, the big tragedy of COVID is uh, not that. I mean, there's obviously there's a lot of sorrow and, and suffering that happens, but it's the sorrow and suffering that happens when isolated. That's the real tragedy yeah. of, of what COVID uh, brought. Um, and so this was my attempt of uh, trying to say, I am there with you. Uh, I started sending these improvisations to people um, that I, or in my family or in my uh, network that were directly affected or who themselves were passing away uh, during the early parts of COVID. And then at that point, I was like, this needs to be bigger than just these, you know, 20 people that I've been uh, working with or sending my music to. Right. Well, that's fantastic that you were doing that. Um, we're going to go to our next video, which is this incredible collaboration with this wonderful tap dancer. So tell us about that. Sure. Um, I'm working uh, with this, this tap dancer, Andrew Nimmer, uh, for many, many years. Uh, he's like the sweetest person out there and his tap is his tap dancing is incredible uh and he's really really curious and always uh trying to expand his his musical uh kind of approach and so playing with another somewhat like unusual percussionist like myself uh seemed like a really natural uh fit well it's an incredible collaboration um obviously very fruitful let's go to the video right now
All right, we are back with Max CT and that fantastic collaboration and tap dancing, just wonderful. So now um, I just wanted to ask you a little bit about your overall philosophy of music. I know you were talking about sending these pieces to people who are for healing purposes, and I, I want to know a little more about that work you're doing. Sure. Um, and in both Senegal and in India, there are uh, deep connections to improvisation. And improvisation is uh, best represented when you are in the present and you're fully in the moment. You're not worried about the past, about how great you used to be or the future, about how great you will be. You're only just alive now. Uh, and you need to have a fluency in your, in your craft in order to do that properly uh, or to be able to at least express as best as you can. Uh, and so once you're in that state, uh, it's such an open window into your heart. You know, there's no ego, you know, it's just now. And the more and more that I've been alive and interacting with people, I'm realizing like that, that feeling is actually deeply impactful in somebody's own life if they're suffering. To be able to say, hey, here is my honest, true self. I'm for you. Here, here you are. And to offer your heart in such a way like that is like, uh, I've had it happen to me. It's, it's, it's incredibly powerful. Well, uh, and then to give it is incredibly powerful. It's a very generous uh, two-way street. As it it's, it's our duty. It's our duty as artists. It's, uh, it's, we, are, we are service workers. That's right. what we have to do. That's right. So we're going to go to our next video, which is with your wife, Priya. Tell us about this. Sure. Uh, this, uh, I've been collaborating with, with my wife, Priya Darshini, for, uh, I guess, since we've been together. Um, she's an incredible singer and composer, songwriter, um, and really just uh, an amazing human being. Uh, I'm so grateful to have her in my life. And we worked on this record, Periphery, uh, which actually got nominated for a Grammy last year, which is pretty nice. awesome. Nice. Uh, and this video was shot in a national park in Mumbai. Uh, and if you see a ladder in the video, that's me holding the ladder under the water. So it's, uh, <laughs> it was like 7 a.m. and she's in the water. It was a whole amazing affair, but what a beautiful video. It's very cool. Let's go to the video right now. So oh. 
after that beautiful song by his wife, Priya, in their collaboration. Max, I just want to thank you so much for being our guest today on the World Fusion Show. That's a pleasure. Thank you for doing what you do. It's amazing. Oh, well, I really appreciate it. And uh, your, your kind words. And keep up the good music. Keep it going. That's right. <laughs> Talk soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Hey, it's Derek Jordan. Thank you for joining us again today on the World Fusion Show. It's been great to have you. We have so many great shows coming with really amazing guests like today. And I just, you know, tell your friends, share us on Facebook and YouTube. And, you know, let's keep this thing going. So I'd like to give a big thank you to our private sponsors, Mackenzie Family Charitable Trust, Chris Pratt, Nancy Feinberg and Ron Dance for your generous support. And remember, as we always say, think globally, listen locally, and support independent music. Mm-hmm.